everybody. Welcome to another episode of Steelers Today on DK Pittsburgh Sports. I'm your host today, Eddie Provident. With me is Dale Lawley. We're on the south side right after Steelers practice. But before we get any further, just want to let everyone know that this show is brought to you by BetQL, the only app that you'll need to make smart bets and get an advantage over your sports book. They scan over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you the best bet recommendation to every game, all major sports. Covers everything, spreads, over-unders, players, prop bets, everything. Their algorithms look at historical performance, matchups, weather, injuries, coaching, and much, much more. They even give you line movements so you can jump on bets in real time. Sharp data to see what the pros are backing. So right now, if you go to try.betql.co slash DKPS to get started now, or you can just download the BetQL app to make your life easy. Again, that's try.betql.co slash DKPS. And if you enter the DKPS uh, promo code at payment, you'll get a 25% discount at checkout on any bet uh, or any subscription. Use the bet, their BetMGM offer to get a free year and find all this in the video description below. So Dale, we, uh, we were told that what we were gonna see more of TJ Watt today. Well, we thought that we were going to see more of T.J. Watt today, and we just saw a lot of the same that we've been seeing. Here's the uh, thing. Today was a kind of an additional practice for them. They typically, uh, during a regular work week for a regular season game, practice Wednesday, Thursday, right. Friday. So today was an additional an day An extra of day for them. Uh, I heard Mike Tomlin uh, telling some players beforehand that this was kind of a conditioning practice okay. uh, to kind of go through everything. Yeah, they started doing some game planning for the Bills, uh, but this was more about Steelers – getting back into the flow of things after being off since Four last days, Wednesday. Right? Yeah. yeah, since last Wednesday. So um, I would guess that Wednesday is going to be the day. Uh, Mike Tomlin's going to address the situation tomorrow uh, during his press conference. Okay. Um, the people out there saying, I, I see a lot of misinformation out there about this. First of all, T.J. Watt's under contract. Right, right. He has a contract until next there, year. There are some people out there who are treating this like he doesn't have a contract. Correct. Secondly, because he has a contract – he will be available to play against mm -hmm. the Buffalo Bills. That's not a question because if he is not available, if he starts sk if he's skipping practices once he's they not going to get paid. He doesn't get paid. Also, they can fine him. Right. And, and they're mandatory fines if you if you do not make yourself available. So mm -hmm. you can't waive those fines when you sign right. a new deal, which is what used to happen. They, teams would fine a guy for not showing up, and then when he he would sign a new deal, and they just say, well, we're going to waive those fines. Yeah. Well, now they're mandatory $45,000 a day fines. And correct me if I'm wrong, but in a worst-case scenario, even if this lingers through the season, they could just franchise tag him, right? They could franchise so, tag him. If it's, not done by, if it's not done by next Saturday, it's not going to get done this season, okay. during the season. They have a, a hard and fast rule that they don't negotiate with guys during, during the, the season. During football season. And right. there's a reason for that. I get a lot of questions about that as well. I was around in 93 when, when they came up with this rule. And they had several players who they were talking with during the season, and they did a couple of deals during the season. And I can remember Adrian Cooper in the in the locker room after the after they lost uh, their last game to, in Kansas City. Uh, they were cleaning out lockers uh, a couple of days later, and to him talking about how his contract uh, negotiations were a distraction to him. Yeah. And so Dan Rooney said, "Okay, if that's going to be a distraction for for players to who, hey, we're not getting this deal done. What's going on with this deal?" If that's going to be a distraction for you or for the, <clears throat> the player during the season, we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. We Makes just sense. won't negotiate during the season. So they don't do it anymore. It doesn't mean they can't pick up negotiations again after the season's done, whenever but that happens. it's just not going to happen in season. It's just not. And, and I, I, you know, everybody understands that. That's how the Steelers work. Um, you know, and, and so you can pick the nego negotiations up where you left off at. Maybe the, maybe the player has a better year. Maybe he has yeah. a worse year. Uh, it, it has that kind of effect on things. Do you now? I want to just get your opinion on this, just strictly Dale's opinion here. Do you think the money, the numbers that are being thrown around, do you think that TJ Watt is worth that kind of contract? Do you think that they'll give him these kind of numbers? I mean, what my concern is paying one guy that big of a salary on the defensive side of the football. It's not that big of a salary, it's never that big of a salary. This isn't baseball okay. or hockey where. Okay, we're going to take the contract. He signs, let's say, he signs a, a five-year, one hundred and fifty million dollar contract. That's just throwing a number out there. Well, that's okay. a nice round number. Yeah. 30, thirty million dollars a year. Well, it's not thirty million dollars a year. That's not how NFL contracts are built. 
Okay. It could be $10 million this year. It could be $15 million next year and $35 million three the years from year. now. Okay. So the people, first of all, people need to understand, it's not your money. <laughs> it's the guy's money who owns the building back there. And he'll decide if he can afford to do this under the salary cap. The salary cap's only going to continue to blow up. Right. I'm, the salary cap in four years from now is going to be like $300 million okay. per team. Okay. You have to pay somebody. And what kind of message does it send to your locker room if you're not going to pay T.J. Watt? That's a good point. That's how you become the Cincinnati Bengals, <laughs> by not paying your stars. The guys in that locker room know what everybody's worth. See, this is what I like about having a guy like Dale on staff here because he knows the ins and outs, man. He's been, he's been around the block a few times, and, and he can explain it in a way that a guy like me can understand it. So, <laughs> uh, They always have a – the thing you need to always understand about the Steelers is that they have a salary hierarchy in their locker room. Okay. Like when they had Troy Polamalu, they were never going to pay another defensive player or defensive back more than what Polamalu got. Because that, because upsets, the the guy. that right. upsets the apple cart in your locker room. Okay. You saw what happened this year with the Dolphins. The Dolphins go out and they sign uh, uh, the cornerback from the, the Cowboys last year. Right. Who's making more money than Xavier Howard. Now he's Xavier upset. Howard says... Wait a second. I'm the number one cornerback on the team. I'm the guy who gets who gets asked to follow all the top receivers. So I want a new contract. And, now and they, he's have to, they have to give him one. So that's why you, you have to have that salary structure in place. These guys all know what everybody else is making. That's what this is all about. Right. And for, for as much as you, you know, everybody wants to say, well, I was the highest paid guy at my position. And that's going to be the case. Right, right now, Patrick Mahomes, the highest paid quarterback in the league. Two or three years from now, he's probably not going right. to be. Somebody else will, will sign a contract that's, that's higher than that. That's just the way this works. And then Mahomes will come back to the Chiefs, even though he has a 10-year contract, and say, yeah, let's renegotiate that. I want to be the highest paid guy again. Again. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk to Dale about the implications of all this for the Buffalo game and get his opinions on what's going to happen on Sunday. This is Steelers Today on DK Pittsburgh Sports. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Steelers Today on DK Pittsburgh Sports, brought to you by BetQL. I'm Eddie Provident. With me is Dale Lawley. Dale, we've got real football to talk about this week. We do. Actual football. DK and I yesterday talked a little bit about what we expect to see in the, in the Buffalo game. What's your flyover of this football game? It's going to be, I mean, you know, people talking about, well, if the Steelers don't have Stephon Tewitt or, or whoever else, you know, the guy. Zach I'm Banner. people. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a tough game to win. It was going to be a tough game for right. them to win any. There's a reason why they're six and a half win underdogs in this game. Buffalo's good. Very good football. You're playing team. Buffalo in their building yeah. with their first game back with fans in the stadium. It's going to be an uphill battle no yep. matter what. So to, to say that suddenly because they don't have stuff on Tour and Zach Banner that now it's going to be a tough game. It was going to be a tough game regardless. Do you? So I see this as more of an offense versus offense kind of. I, I think this can. This has the potential to be a high scoring football game. Do you see that same potential, or do you think this is going to be one of those first games of the season where the starters haven't had a lot of time to gel with each other on both sides of the ball, and they're trying to figure things out? It's a little rusty. Like, where, where do you fall on that? Here's the thing. If you go back and look at the game that these two teams played last year, the Steelers held the Bills to three, three offensive points in the, in the first, first half. half. Yeah. The Bills did nothing offensively in the first half of that game. That's a good point. Um, so, you know, it's, it still ended up a 26, what was it, 26-15 game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Steelers' defense is good enough to slow down anybody. You're not going to stop everybody in today's NFL. And, you know, if you can hold the Bills to somewhere in the 20s, you have a chance to win the football mm -hmm. game. A chance. Uh, I'm not saying that the Steelers are going to go up there and win. Uh, but I think they'll have a chance to win this football game if they play their A game. But you have to you have to bring that A defense. I think they can do it. They've got a lot of interesting pieces on that side of the football. Yep. Uh, some different guys. Uh, you know, we we see the way they're moving. You know, uh, how are they going to integrate Melvin Ingram into the into the defense? Uh, you know, how's that secondary uh, rebuilt look? Um, you know, Speaking we, of, we haven't had a chance to talk about uh, the Witherspoon's uh, trade yet. Um, do you, how do you think he f slots into the secondary? I mean, he won't do much right now. Right. I, you know, they kind of worked him into practice today, uh, playing him on the outside on both sides. I saw some things where some, some people were saying, well, he's going to play in the slot for them. No. He's not. No, 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 he's not. This gives them more of an opportunity, perhaps down the road, to keep to put Cam Sutton in, in the, the slot, slot and keep him there. It also improves their depth along yeah. the defensive secondary. 
but quite frankly, I mean, you know, Witherspoon's going to be a few weeks uh, before he's up to speed. Yeah, and, and he, I like the signing because of his size and, and just his build. I also like the fact that, you know, I, I'm not – I'm a numbers guy when it comes to hockey. I'm not so much an analytics guy when it comes to football because I don't know how that all plays out on the field. But pro football focus last year had him ranked the fifth best corner in the league and then in coverage – and then two years ago, I believe it was, they had him in the bottom five. Well, so that tells I think you all some, you need to know yeah, about pro football some, focus is great. <laughs> I think there's potential with Witherspoon, but right now I'm with you. He's just a depth guy. You know, Maybe in a few weeks we'll see where he comes. But uh, it's good to see them adding some depth regardless to the secondary. Yeah, I think it was needed. You get an yeah. guys played NFL snaps. Exactly. Um, it gives you, again, you can't. One of the big things when, when they were entering this camp was where's the depth? Where's the depth? Well, they've improved the depth they have, a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is just real quickly. It's something we talk about all the time, but offensive line, you mentioned Zach Banner being out. Uh, any concerns about Dan Moore getting the start as a rookie in his first game? I don't really have those concerns other than he's just never seen it, but I, I like what I've seen from Dan Moore. You, you, the offensive line was going to be a big question mark. It was the big question mark going into this, into this season, uh, into the training camp. It's still a question mark. We won't know until about midseason. Um, you know, they're going to be starting two rookies on their offensive line in Buffalo against a good defensive front. Yep. We'll see. I mean, that's why you have a veteran quarterback. That's why you drafted Najee Harris to help you improve that. Exactly. Well, we've got Mike Tomlin's first regular season press conference tomorrow. Uh, we've got a couple more practices this week, and then it's off to Orchard Park for Steelers versus Buffalo Bills on Sunday. Uh, I cannot stress how excited I am to see some real regular season football. Uh, don't forget to go to try.betql.co slash DKPS to uh, get your 25% off your first uh, subscription. Uh, for Dale Lawley, for DK Pittsburgh Sports, I'm Eddie Provident. Thanks for watching. Take care.